pray. Amen. Well, bring out your Bibles and uh, writing materials, please. For the next uh, few minutes that we have, let us hear the word of God together. Hope is no hope when there is when there is something you see. Let me take that again. Hope is no hope when there is something you see that you desire. Hope is no hope. In other words, hope is no hope when what you desire, you see it. We hope when we, when what we desire is not seen. Hope is hope when what you desire has not come to the fore. Job said, I will wait until my change comes. In hope, there is a waiting time. It is hope this month we are going to be looking in unwavering hope. What does it mean to have an unwavering hope? It is, the, it is unwavering hope that unlocks divine blessings. It is unwavering hope that unlocks divine blessings. Abraham, the father of many nations, became what God promised him that he will make him. The Bible says, who contrary to hope, in hope believed. And therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Romans chapter 4, verses 18 and 22. Hope was his anchor. So today we are talking on that tattoo, anchor of hope. Anchor of hope. Very quickly, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. This hope that we have in God, this hope that what God has promised is also able to perform, this hope is both sure and steadfast. This hope is both sure and steadfast. It's unwavering. This hope does not waver. This hope that God will do what he has promised you is sure and steadfast. It's both sure and steadfast. This hope is the anchor of the soul. It gives sound mind to the soul, according to 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. What God has given us is power, love, and sound mind. Anchor of hope. Back to Romans chapter 4, verse 18. One translation reads, one translation of the Bible reads, even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping. And I love that. Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he will become the father of many nations. For God said to him, that's how many descendants you will have you know one day god showed him abraham the stars of the stars in the heavenly place and god told him he said look now towards heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them and he said to him so shall your descendants B, Genesis 15, verse 5. God does not promise for fun. 
for all the promises of God in him are yes and in him. Amen. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. So God does not make empty promises. Abraham remembered the promise of God that God have shown him and showed him through the heavenly stars that if you can number this, so shall your descendants be. So because of this, Abraham remembered the promise of God. So when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping. Have you found yourself whereby there are no grounds for you to still hope? Because it seems that your chances are limited. You've gone past the age. Have you been in that situation whereby you look around you, there are no reasons for hope? Abraham was in that situation. Bible says, even when there were, there were no reasons, even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping. When it appeared, he had gone past the age of childbearing. What age have you gone past? Or what is that thing that you feel that you've gone past? I'm here to tell you something about hope that will ginger your expectation. Look at this. It will have been easy much 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 more easier or much more easier for abraham had abraham had been in his 30s or 40s in age when god made that promise to him because at that time he would have considered that he had more grounds for hope but at 100 year old Hope is the anchor of the soul. The stability, the support for your soul. In Abraham's case, hope was his anchor because there was no reason for hope for him. But yet, because of what God had told him and shown him, he kept hoping. In verse 21 of the same book of Romans, chapter 4, talking about Abraham, and being fully convinced, being fully convinced that what he had promised, that is what God had promised him, he was also able to perform. Then I was asking God, I said, what made Abraham? to be fully convinced that what God had promised, God will deliver to him, just as he had said. And I want to ask you the same question. What is that thing that can make you to be fully convinced that what you are hoping for, God is able to perform? If we know what this is, can we apply it today? I believe so. I believe so. Remember, it says, for all the promises of God in him are yes and in him. Amen. So if God made promises in the past and it worked, he's still making the same promises today and in the future, it will work. So yes, if we know what can make you to be fully persuaded that God is able to perform what a promise that same thing that can make you to be fully persuaded if we know it that made Abraham to be fully persuaded if we know it we can also apply it into your situation what was it that made Abraham to be fully fully convinced one translation says being fully persuaded so that's another way of convince being fully persuaded that that God had power to do what he had promised. What was that? What was it that made Abraham 
to be fully persuaded that what God had promised, God was also able to perform. If we know what that is, can we apply it today so that it can help you and I to be fully persuaded that what God had promised in time past, now and in the future, in his word, what God had promised is applicable to me today. What was that? In Abraham's case, it is simply trust. He trusted God. Abraham, he trusted God. Trust is the bedrock of unwavering hope. Without trust, there is no hope. You trust your husband and your trust your husband will not betray you. You trust your wife and your wife will not betray you. You trust your partner and your partner will not betray you. That is it. You hope in whatever they say that they will do it because of trust. God called Abraham as he was called at that time and told him to go to a foreign land in Genesis 12, 1 to 4. God called him out of his father's house. Mind you, he was a pagan. Abraham at that time. He was a pagan. God called him from idol worshipping background. And he left. The scripture says, so Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken to him. God told him, go into a land that I will show you. And the Bible says, so Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken to him. From experience, therefore, he had trusted God and God has brought him this far. Do you trust God? One of the problems of not having hope is lack of trust. The same way he had trusted God in the past, Abraham now at age 100 will never forget the same way he trusted God. When God now told him that he was going to have a son. The same way he had to trust God so that he would be the father of many nations. Remember, for all the promises of God in him are what? Yes. And in him, amen. Even when there was no reason for hope. The trust in God will keep us going. Romans 8.24 Romans 8.24 tells us what hope is and what hope is not. It says, who hope for what he can already see? When what you hope for, you can see it. Then you don't hope anymore. Therefore, number one, unwavering hope is what must happen before you can see your desire. Unwavering hope is what must happen before you can see your desire. See, I hoped to get married one day when I was a young man. I did not even know who I was going to marry. What I knew was that God called me into the ministry. And I did not wait, I did not want to waste my life looking for a woman that God has not sent to me. So I began to pray and I began to be led by spirit. I was hoping that I will get the woman that God has called to be my wife. And today, over 30 years after, of course, when you look back, remember how it all began. You see, I do not hope anymore because I found my wife with three lovely children. So what am I hoping for? So Romans 8.24 tells us what hope is and what hope is not. Does that, does that reminiscence in your own life as well? Can you remember there was a time you are hoping what you are hoping to do or to become? But years later, are you still hoping? No, it's, you now have it. 
So that shows you that when you see something, you don't hope for it anymore. But remember the steps prior to you having it. Unwavering hope is what must happen before you can see what you desire. But when you see it, you don't hope for it anymore. Now you know. Hope does not disappoint. Hope does not disappoint. In Romans chapter 5, verse 5, it tells us why hope does not disappoint. It says it's because the people that hope in God, the love God, the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit he has given us. So love, love is the basis for trust. Love is the bedrock of trust. So because you love God, you trust him and you have hope in his promises. That is why hope does not disappoint. Abraham loved God. And so, because he loved God, trust was not an issue. Is trust an issue in your life? Trust in God? Is it an issue? If trust is an issue in your life, then you are love sick. You know? You are sick. You don't have the love of God. So love is the bedrock. Love is the bedrock of trust. Going forward, therefore, you need to love God to trust him. You need to love God to trust him. Another translation reads, and hope does not put us to shame. That's very clear. Hope does not put us to shame. Hope in God, hope in God's promises can never put you to shame. In Job 14, verse 7, for there is hope. Say to yourself, there is hope. There is hope. When you wake up in the morning and everything looks uh, daunting, tell yourself, there is hope. For there is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again. In one day, Job lost everything. All his ch seven children to a natural disaster. But because Job loved God, he was able to trust God and he hoped in God. In, in chapter 42, verse 10, the Lord restored Job's losses. There's hope for someone here, and that could be you. God told me to tell you, there is hope. Say to yourself, there is hope. There is hope. Indeed, verse 10 of that Job 42, indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Anchor of hope. In Romans 15, verse 4, Romans 15, verse 4, for whatever thing were written before were written for our learning. Whatever thing were written before were written for our learning. So we learn from Father Abraham, just as I've said earlier. On. We learn from Job, again, just as, as I've said some few minutes ago, because they were written in the Holy Bible. These people loved God. And so because they loved God, they trusted God, and they hoped in his promises. And that was why today we are learning 
from them. That was why they were written so that we can learn from them. And it goes on to say, for whatever thing were written before, were written for our learning, that we today, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. The Holy Bible contains scriptures, and the scriptures, which are the words of God, gives us hope. For all scriptures are inspired by God and are profitable. All scriptures are inspired by God and are profitable. Number two, unwavering hope is built on scriptures. When you see a hopeless situation, Bring scriptures into it and you will have hope. Mental health condition was even cured from the scriptures. As we say in Mark chapter 5 verse 15 tells us about this. And the man now full of age who was born with a congenital condition blindness in John chapter 9, it was killed from the scriptures. To tell you that scriptures gives hope. Scriptures give them hope for a better life. So do you desire a better life, an improved condition? Get it from the scriptures. Every time you see a hopeless situation, is crying out. For the lack of scriptures. In 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 14. In 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 14. So he went down. Talking about Naaman. He went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan. According to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored. God today has put in the church his servants to bring the message of hope. To bring the message of hope. If anyone speaks for God, you will know them. By their fruit, you shall know them. If anyone speaks for God, because God will validate their message. For Naaman, hope was his anchor. Hope was his anchor because when he finally obeyed the instruction that was given to him, his flesh was restored. Anchor of hope. In John chapter 2, remember the wedding at Cana? It was the mother of Jesus that spotted the problem. When they ran out of wine, you know, that was it. That, that that could have been a shame to the to the to the groom. When they ran out of wine, hope gave the anchor. It gave the anchor, the security, the support from shame, from shameful experience. Hope gave them anchor from shame. Verse 5, his mother, Jesus' mother, said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. The mother of Jesus gave them hope, a way out, out of shame. He gave the, she gave them hope, a way out of shame. I want to speak to someone there. There's a way out of shame for you. Verse 7, Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. And they filled it, them up to the brim. There is someone here that needs a way out of shame. And I've come to prepare you and show you the way 
out. Pay attention to what you must do. Verse 8. Remember, that was a shame that was about to be unraveled. And Jesus' mother saw there's a need to, 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 to stop this shame from happening. And she came to Jesus with hope because she had hope in his son, in what his son has the ability to do. And the instruction the mother of Jesus gave to the servant was, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Verse 8. So the first instruction which they did, verse 7, Jesus Christ told them, fill the water pot with water. And they did. Verse 8. And he said, this is the second instruction, draw some out now. Mark that now. Draw some out now. It's expedient on them to do as told. Draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. That's another, that was another instruction. What could have happened if they say, when we, when I, when we have the time, we will draw it out. They would have missed it. So there's urgency in carrying out the instruction of the word of God. Not when it feel, you feel you want to do it. It is when the instruction is given. Remember Naaman. Naaman could not do it as at the time they told him. And he went away furious with his leprosy. But when he changed his mind, it's okay to change your mind to serve God. It's okay to change your mind to repent. It's okay. We are all human after all. So Naaman changed his mind and he came back to do as he was told. And guess what? His flesh was restored. So what has stopped him from being healed? The devil or himself? Think of that. But verse 8 of John chapter 2, and he said, Jesus gave another instruction. Draw some out now. And take it, the third one, instruction, take it to the master of the feast. So Jesus knew what has happened. But the servant did not know. So when God gives you an instruction, he knew what has happened. It has happened before he gave you the instruction. It has happened before he gave you the instruction. That is faith. Draw some out now. If they had not drawn it out, they would have missed out. And take it to the master of the feast. If he did not know that miracle had already happened, why would God ask them to go and serve it to the master of ceremony? Remember, hope does not disappoint. God doesn't want to disappoint anyone and he will not disappoint you. So the blessing is in the obedience. And what did they do? They took it. They did as they were told. They did notice. They were instructed each time of what to do. And then what happened afterwards. Same thing with Naaman. Same thing with the Bible characters that you have, that have been written for our learning. We we'll follow the same steps. Love, trust, hope, and obedience. This is your way out of shame for anyone that is listening. To obey the word of God to you. Verse 9. The water that was made wine was tasted by the master of ceremony. 
But then, when did it become wine? When was the water made wine? I leave that for you to decipher. Anchor of hope. Finally, whatever was written in the past was written for our learning today. That we through the patience and the comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Not only does the scriptures give hope, it also provides us with the necessary patience and comfort. There is hope. There is hope. Let us pray. The first prayer of the three I want us to pray about is, Father, in the name of Jesus, give me hope in this life. Give me hope. A man that is hopeless, evidently, has no scriptures in him or her. Because the scriptures brings hope. A man that is hopeless, or a woman that is hopeless, therefore, is crying out for the scriptures. And if you are that one that is close to that person, or you are that one that is hopeless, what you need is the scriptures. Please ask the Father in the name of Jesus, give me hope in life. The next prayer is that save me from this condition. You know the condition. God knows the condition. The devil knows the condition. Some people that are close to you know the condition. Why don't you ask him, Father, save me from this condition. I love you and I will trust you and I will have hope in you. Save me from this condition. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Please ask in the name of Jesus. Before the end of today, you will know if you have hope or not. And before the end of this week, you will know whether you have hope or not. And before the end of this month, you will know whether you have hope or not. Because hope does not disappoint. And the third prayer is, Father, give me the anchor of hope. If hope is the anchor of the soul, the support of the soul, the basis for a sound mind, Jehovah, I ask, give me the anchor of hope. I ask in the name of Jesus. Begin to talk to him. Begin to talk to him. Father, we bless you for that situation, for that condition, for that woman, for that man, for that boy, for that girl, for that hopeless condition, oh God, hopeless situation. Jehovah, let every hopeless situation be turned around by the scriptures. Give us the scriptures to take away every hopelessness in our lives and in our church. Give us that scriptures, the word of God, the inspired word of God. Lord, thank you. Even in this month, O oh God, of unwavering hope, let our hope not waver. For everyone, O oh God, that is sick of love, for everyone, O oh God, that is love sick, that is, they are devoid of the love of God. Jehovah, fill them with the love of God. The Bible says you are the God of hope. Fill us with joy and peace in believing. Fill us with joy and peace in believing. And let hope abound in us by your Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' holy name, we have prayed. Amen. 
Come on, clap those hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.